Making our homes look great with furnishings and fixings and wallpapers and paint has become a real big thing in Britain. So is adding plants. Beautiful, natural house plants. Not artificial, the real thing. Things like these beautiful anthuriums here. And we've also got orchids and calatheas and ferns and dracaenas, they look great. But a big thing is now to have plants that are grown in glass. Whether they're terrariums, bottle gardens, or simple vases that are holding plants that are rooting, it makes a big difference. I mean, I went into a garden centre the other day and they're selling things like this. A test tube. And what's this one here? This is a measure jar and they're growing plants without soil just in the liquid itself which is infused with fertilizer. Don't throw away jars, jam jars or little pots or anything glass wise. Keep hold of them because what they do is it enables you to root cuttings into it. Now this is a sweet potato. You could also do some great cuttings with geraniums. If you've got a, a spider plant like this one here, you can fill it with water and let it sit in the top, cut it from the main stem. Don't put it so the whole plant's underwater, just the bottom part, and it'll initiate roots and you can see them grow in the glass. You can add a little bit of food in there to keep the plant living in water, but of course they naturally do better when they're potted up and they start to grow. So nurturing, taking clones from your pot plants, you can do quite comfortably directly into soil or directly into glass. And glass has become more and more popular as a fashion statement inside the home. Now, Bottle gardens were originally used to transport plants. Years and years ago on galleon ships, they collect plants and specimens because if you can contain it, so you, you plant in size, usually succulents can use moss or even compost in with it. And if you're using compost in a bottle garden and you're gonna seal the top, it's best to buy some activated charcoal. Uh, so it mixes in there and it keeps the soil sweet. And then you can plant them up. I mean, some people actually put the cork in and it creates a proper microclimate. As the water evaporates, it collects as condensation, and then as it cools, it dips down and, and runs back into the soil as well. So it lives quite comfortably in its own environment, or you could take the top off and let it breathe as well, but then you've got to water as it goes. And if you're ever watering one of these, lean it to the side and let the water trickle down the side, save disrupting the roots. And these are really nice. I got these from Urban Botanist. Now, of course, there are many different shapes. You don't have to go to the huge big ones. You can do novelty ones. There are novelty pears and the novelty apples that are planted up. You can buy them pre-planted or do them yourself. And of course, it even goes to the far extreme, linking in with the home style. And there is lamps as well with a bottle garden, living plants underneath and a light bulb at the top. But children can get involved too. You can also get these plastic jars enabling the kids. My daughter did this one. This one's uh, Alice's and she's got little lights that run around the top. There's succulents in there. There's multicolour gravel. They call it unicorn gravel, of course. Daddy should have known that. Uh, and Abigail's is this one here. It's got a blue fairy in. She tells me that's silver mist. Um, and they've got the mixtures of the plants, of the succulents and the moss. And they did these themselves. So there's an opportunity of creating not only glass to take cuttings, but ornaments that you can have inside your own home and you can also get the kids involved too. Now terrariums are something completely different because they're not made from one single piece of glass. In many cases it's made from several and here's a little um, echeveria in the centre there, look at that. And it's got what we call it reindeer moss around the outside and there's also a little door. Now you would never close a door if it's a succulent or a cacti inside because they like it quite dry and closing it if there's moisture obviously creates a lot of humidity. Uh, if you want to close the door you'd be better to put in things like ferns make a real bit of a difference and anything that's got softer foliage but succulents and cacti usually prefer an open face. Brightly lit windowsill uh, or semi-shade but not too much direct sun because obviously there's glass and it just heats everything up. Now here is a real big one. I mean look at that. It's gorgeous. So I'm not going to plant this up. All I'm going to do is I put in some reindeer moss. I'm just going to settle it here and put in some plants. You know, this is beautiful. This is Tillandsia uh, cyanea. Uh, this isn't its flower, 
this is the vessel that holds its flower. Its little purple flowers come all the way around the outside and it lasts without water for a long time. So I'm not going to take it out of the pot, but I'm going to bury the pot in some of the moss at the back there so it starts to create an effect already. Now what have I got here? Now, this is a little one. We call this fingers. It's a Sansevieria. It's the same uh, member of the family as the uh, mother-in-law's tongue. I'm going to nestle that just into the back and just hide it with this lovely moss. And this moss will hold some moisture as well. And finally, uh, a lecoveria here that I'm just going to nestle in. And move it round. Obviously, I'll probably spend a lot more time doing this than I've done. And of course, I'm attacking it from the back when normally I should plant it from the front, but I'm just showing you. Uh, and that's what it looks like. A matter of moments. Now, it's really easy for you to change the plants if you want to change the look. Or if one plant doesn't look too happy, you can take it out and put it on a bathroom windowsill to recover and replace it with another. But that makes something dramatic, entertaining and full of life rather than just a normal inanimate object inside the house. Now, it's another good one for you to plant yourself because you can buy these terrariums online. There are many different suppliers available. This particular one here has the corner taken off its box shape. So instead of having it down like that, you have it as an angle. It becomes a diamond. So I'm going to plant that up. Now, the materials you can use are quite easy. You've got the uh, uh, terrarium itself just here, and then you get to choose your plants. Now, I'm open-faced one, so I'm using cacti and succulents. There's a little aloe here. They make really good little plants. They don't need too much water, so water little and often. Uh, there's little crassulas here. There's another little rosette um, succulent at the base here. There's a cacti. I'm not going to plant the cacti in this one because I quite like the succulents on their own. So that's the cacti. Uh, and succulent selection that you can put into your terrariums. Next, it's toppings. Now you can use just small gravel like this, or you can even use sand as well. All of these are good mediums to hold the plants in position. You can then either embellish, or you don't want to use aggregate, you can use the moss like we did before. Here's the reindeer moss light coloured, here's reindeer moss dark coloured, and this is flat moss, normal sphagnum moss that you can buy from online or most garden centres or florists as well, sell these. And if you really want to add some more texture at the end, you can add any form of stone. Some of these you can buy online, some you can get from the garden. Now putting the plants in, it's quite straightforward. It's a triangular shape, the bottom. So I'm gonna put two plants at the back and one plant at the front. The taller of the plants at the back. One's just going in there, another one is going in there. It takes a bit of balancing act because there's nothing to support the pots inside the container so they fall over a bit but don't worry take your time and then a little one at the front there so that is the layout of my terrarium. Now the next job is is to put in some aggregate to hold them into into position really. Um, actually what, what should I, I'll, I'll do this gravel I'll do this color gravel here I've already got a uh, jug pour a bit more into the jug I like to pour it into the jug because the flute of the spout at the end will give me more concentrate of the, uh, of the gravel in position. And I've made a simple piece of paper wrapped around to make a funnel really, to enable me to pour this into that, into here. Now, remember the gravel is holding it into position. So don't just dump a load of gravel in there. I'm just gonna position it so the gravel stabilizes the pots. A bit in there and I'm actually using the side of the terrarium to help me disperse the gravel. Another bit over this side just to hold it into position and there we have it. The gravel is now making the pots more stable. If you do get some gravel stuck down the centre of a plant don't worry. All you need is one of the chopsticks or, or, or a fork or anything like that and a bit of blue tack. Stick the blue tack onto the end like that and you can dab in if it's at the back, push it onto the gravel, get it to stick on and it comes off really easily. There you have it, that was quite quickly done. But as you can see now, it's quite a, a desert looking effect with light coloured sandy gravel with three succulents in their pots in there. Nice and easy. 
I'd like to add a little bit more green. But you could leave it like this if you wished. What I'm going to do is use a little bit of this reindeer moss just at the back. Give a little bit of extra height along here. A little touch at the side. There we go. You can spend a bit of time just I mean, enjoy it, you know. You're planting it. There's something special that's going on a windowsill. You know, take your time, enjoy it, take a look at it, move it back, try something you like, take it out again, you know, have a bit of fun. I think this is the magic of gardening, is the fact that everything's bespoke, everything's to your own taste. There we go. And that, actually I quite like that, maybe a little bit of moss at the front just to balance it. That you've got just to, just to create a... A, a bit of an effect. Now, you may like the moss, you may not. You may want to put different things in it. You can add a few little light coloured stones to create more of a textured finish, but it's as simple as that. Planting terrariums is great fun. And you know, you want to change it next week, take them out, buy another plant, try something different, you can do that. These little plantlets here cost, you know, a couple of quid in a garden centre. You can buy lots of different ones and go for a different look. Effectively see your terrariums almost like vases. You know, with your cut flowers, you buy something, it goes over, you try freesias one month, you might try peonies the next, or roses or chrysanthemums. You can do the same with your terrariums and bottle gardens. You can change the look. They remain as a structure, the feature on the windowsill, that the plants add personality as it goes. Try gardening with glass. Bottle gardens for you, jars to root cuttings in, terrariums or even little, little bottle gardens for kids too. It looks great in the home and it brings a feeling of nature inside.